Welcome to D-Lab. On the bench today, I have a 1972 Fender Deluxe Tube Type guitar amplifier in need of maintenance. It came in here intermittent with some hum. Let's see what's going on. So let's give her a quick look over. Speaker cloth is original and in good shape. All the correct knobs. A little bit of dirt and grime, but what would you expect? I'll take care of that after I do the repair. Let's take a look around the back. Here we are backside. I've already removed the little access panel so we can get to the tubes and see the chassis. Speaker looks original. Here you can see the power cord suffered some damage in its past. It's got a little bit of duct tape repair. We'll address that later. Let's take a look at the chassis. She all looks original. Tubes are installed. The cover is on the capacitor bank. Everything looks cool. There is the serial number. There's the original little sticker inside the cabinet showing the tube layout. One thing I noticed right off the bat, see the rectifier tube? See those pins? That's because this jobber is looser than a goose. That's probably why it's intermittent. So we'll get that seated. Let's power it up and see what else is going on. This amp has been recently powered, so it's not like uh, one that's been sitting in a barn for 20 years, so there's no reason to bring it up on the Variac. So I'm going to power it up. I got the lights off in the shop so we can see if we've got any smoke or fire, but I really want to see the tube filaments come on, which they are. I can see the 5U4 and 6V6 is glowing. So now let's apply the high voltage and see what it does. Oh yeah. Okay, it powers up, there is some hum. It's time to pull the chassis, give her an inspection. All right, got her loose. Pulled that uh, rectifier tube. So I wouldn't smash that as I was getting this out of here. Oh yeah. There she is. Looks 100% original. So we'll pan her bottom side. The first thing I noticed is the lamp is missing. Probably burned out in its past. But man, this jobber is super clean. It doesn't have any signs of past maintenance. It's in great shape. Still has those old Mallory 25 microfarad electrolytics. I'm sure those are bad. I'm not a big fan of these blue uglies. But the first thing I want to do is check all the electrolytics. Especially, if we go over here, that negative bias cap. If that guy's bad, your output tubes are going to run away. Alright, let's flip her topside and pop off the cap cover. All right, top side, like I said, I had that uh, rectifier tube removed. Take a look at the power transformer, it's pretty interesting. The numbering has been stamped into it, and there's actually distortion in this bell and cover. Very strange. Other than that, here's the uh, reverb. Nope, sorry, that's a choke. Then we have the output transformer. Reverb transformer's over here. Everything's original. She's nice and clean. All right, got the cap cover loose. Let's pull it off and see what surprises await us. Oh yeah, check that out. What do we got in here? Some blast marks. So yep, cap blew out. Shot all of its insides all over the cover. So all these caps have to be changed immediately. All right, so Fender originally used these 16 microfarad 450 volt Mallory caps. They've done their job, it's time to go, and what I replace them with is these 22 microfarad 500 volt caps made by F&T. These are the exclusive caps that I use in D-Lab for all Fender repairs. Obviously it's a good idea before you change the caps, take a meter, see if there's voltage on them. You got like 9 volts there, nothing, nope, oh, 10 volts there. So work your way down, make sure there's not hazardous voltages on these caps. Okay, 25, that might poke you. What we got here? 
I think I saw about 19. Either way, what I'm going to do, it's pretty simple on these because all the positives face the same direction. So I'm just going to grab my wire cutters and we're going to clip these guys out. Okay. Get them out of the way. Clean up this mess. Put in the new ones. So I was able to clean off that cap juice pretty easily off of this fiber board, but I did notice that this wire here and that solder connection over there are severely corroded from the chemical. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all that wiring. So keep in mind these first two caps here are actually wired in parallel. So we're going to end up with somewhere around 44 microfarads at 500 volts. So all the new F and T capacitors are installed and I also changed the cap underneath for the negative bias. So let's power this thing up and see if it can produce a signal. This is the initial power up of the deluxe reverb. So I'm going to turn the power and standby on. I've got a variac over here. I'm going to just give it its initial little blast of power. I'm going to watch that meter. Make sure I see some negative voltage come up, which it is. So I'm just going to take it up to about half voltage, watching my variac, making sure there's no excessive current draw, and there's not. So that means that the filter caps got their little initial taste of high voltage. So now I'm going to plug the amp in direct. Then we're going to use an audio generator as an input. I have a dummy load hooked up for the speaker and we're going to see if we can get a signal out of this thing using the scope. Alright, so here we go. We're fully powered up. I'm going to take my audio generator into the normal channel 1 input. Bring up the volume, see what we get. Look at there. Nice clean sine wave. I've got about negative 36 volts or so on the output tubes. And that's not changing. Good sign. Go into the channel 2 vibrato. See what we get. Same thing. Good signal. So at this point, I do not have the reverb hooked up and I'm not going to activate tremolo. Test that later. But I've put in the new filter caps, the new negative bias cap, and the amp is working. So I'm going to update the owner and see how much further he wants me to go. I've talked to the owner and what he wants me to do next is change out all these electrolytics, these old white Mallory's. They're probably toast anyway. Good idea to get them out. We're going to leave these blue tone caps because he says there's some mojo in those that he wants to maintain. However, I will be changing out the grid caps going to the finals because if those leak, it can destroy your output tubes. The other thing I'm going to add is a master volume control, okay? And the best place to put that is close to the output tubes. So to do that, I'm going to relocate the fuse holder over here where the outlet is. That will allow me to put this pot right between the output tubes, keep the leads short, and keep the noise down. And instead, is the ground switch is going to be removed the fuse holder will go in that position, master volume here. This switch actually does nothing now since it has a grounded cord. So there is no more switching for less noise. The switch is obsolete. I pulled the ground switch, fuse holder. Fuse holder now will go in that hole. Master volume will go in this hole. And we're also going to clip out the death cap. So fuse holder is in place and that went right in the original hole where the switch used to be. But of course here the hole is much bigger than the shaft of the pot. So I put a washer in there to adapt the hole size down to fit the shaft of the pot. That'll keep it nice and centered. What's nice about this little mod is if you want to reverse it, easy to do. Just pop the stuff out, rearrange it, just keep your old parts. Well, here's the inside view. You can see the master volume pot has to be put in with the terminals facing this way. If you try to spin them up, they'll hit the chassis. It's also a good way to position it because it's going to actually be centered between the two output tubes. 
So we're going to have wiring coming from the eyelet board to the master volume pot and that will feed the output tubes. Well, here's the master volume pot assembly wired up, ready to drop into place. Okay. I'm not going to go into the details of how that's wired. I have another video that covers that. I'll add the link into the description. So this blue wire goes to the negative bias. These two white wires will go to the grids of the 6V6s. This Belden cable with the two wires will pick up the grid signal over here after I remove these two resistors underneath. So we're going to put in the new grid caps, wire that up, get the master volume pot wired in, and retest the amp. Master volume pot installation is complete. One word of caution, when you install this, make sure that this cap, the signal coming off this cap, is still going to that tube, and that one is still going to that tube. So follow your wires, make sure that the pads on that pot are the ones that are dedicated to this side and this side. If you flip-flop that, your phasing is going to be wrong and you're going to have feedback and you're going to say, what the heck did I do? So before we can test, I have to reconnect the power since we moved the fuse holder. So let's get that connected. We'll hook it back up and check the operation of the master volume pot. Once I'm happy with that, then I'll put in the new grid caps. All right, let's test the master volume. Got the scope hooked up. Amp is idling. I do not have the high voltage on at this time. So no signal, right? So master volume is all the way up. Turn on our standby. So there's our output, okay? Looking across the dummy load, using audio generator as the input. So now I can bring up the preamp, but turn down the master. So now you could like really crank on your preamp if you want to get distortion, but drive your final separately. So it's working great. Next step, let's change out the caps. Right, I've got a new power cord in place. Just need to wire that up. I also have added one of those spring retainers to the rectifier tube to keep him up in place. After I'm completed with the wiring, then we're going to replace all of these Mallory white caps with some new 25 microfarad caps and retest. So I elected to give this guy a nifty little option to his amp and that is the left and right output tube bias test points. So you remove the AC outlet, take yourself an aluminum plate, pop in two of these banana jacks, obviously you connect wires, and you go over here and you put one ohm resistors from pin 8 to ground on each tube and that will allow you to see the millivolts coming off those resistors which represents the current through the output tubes. Alright, getting closer, I've removed the knobs, I've got them soaking to remove the grime, clean the front panel, I changed out the two grid caps, here's the originals, I would highly recommend if you change any caps on that preamp board, you change those because if they leak, they damage your output tubes. Here's the back side wiring for the new master volume pot. Those test points that I installed for checking bias. And if you look down there and there, you'll see the one ohm resistors going to pin 8. So I'm just picking that millivolt signal off so we can watch the current through the output tubes. So now, when you set your negative bias, you can monitor it directly without having to remove the chassis. Alright, it's checkout time. I got my meter hooked to one of the test points for bias. Got a scope, obviously. Dummy load is hooked up for the speaker. The reverb unit this time is connected and I'm using an audio generator. So we're going to power it up, we're going to take a look at the sine wave, bring up the reverb, make sure it goes boing boing, and we'll check our bias on the two output tubes. All right, I'm monitoring one of the output tubes, let's turn on standby. And there is the current 
flowing through that tube. So a little over 27 milliamps. Let's go to the other tube. And you see there we got just under 30 milliamps. So they are balanced pretty well. I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to do some other testing at this point. So I've got my volume all the way down. We're on the vibrato channel. Let's take a look at the scope. There she is, nice and clean. Now if I were to turn down the master, you'd see that happening on the scope. So the master volume is working well. Now, let's take a look at the reverb. So yes, I know you can't hear this, but I can tell by looking at the scope that the reverb is working. So we're going to bring up the volume so we have a signal. Now I'm going to bring up the reverb knob, okay? So let's give it a little reverb. Now you see nothing's happening, right? Well, that's because the frequency isn't varying. Now watch when I vary the frequency on the generator. See how it's all crazy? Now I'm going to take the reverb control back to zero, and I'll vary the frequency again. So you can see the reverb tank is working fine. So I've already verified the tremolo, but we'll do it again. I've got a jumper installed to enable it. Okay, I'm going to bring up my intensity. So there is the intensity, and here's my speed. So it's looking like that's working fine. If you look down here, you can see the little neon flashing. I move my audio generator now to channel 1, the normal channel. Check the operation of that, my tone controls, etc. Everything's looking really good. I think it's time to get this jobber back in the cabinet and give it an operational test, and then the owner is actually going to come over and play this one. It just happens that Skype came up on my screen, but I'm still going to review what I did for the repair. I've been working on this for two weeks. Yeah, Believe imagine it. that. Believe it or not, I still have the shirt on. Yeah, nice of me to iron it for you. Same shirt I was wearing to begin with. Not cleaned. What's the phone ringing for? Kill the phone. All right, so the wine of the night. Red Diamond. What, what do you mean? They're telling me to mute my audio. What kind of crap is that? Mute the microphone. Look, he's on there. What good is Skype if they don't even want to talk to me? Huh? What good is Skype if you don't want to talk to me? You guys ain't doing nothing yet. They're not even doing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay, so let's see. Then, oh, hold on, hold on, just just relax. Okay, there, I muted it. Okay, so since I now have Skype and I have my viewer, I'm going to go through what I did for the repair on this video. So since I can't quite remember that, I'm going to zoom in on. Hold on a second. What are you doing? Losing your memory? All right, so on this Fender Deluxe Reverb. I've got a list of the repairs. Somebody over here thinks I'm losing my mind, but you know what, Marcia? I... What's this little squeaky voice? I love that. Okay, here's a list of repairs. I put in new FNT filter caps, a new negative bias cap, right? You gotta have that. Replace all the 22 microfarad caps on the preamp board. Replace the 0.1 microfarad caps going to the grids of the output tubes. Doing pretty good, huh, Marsh? Okay. Uh, I tested all tubes, so okay. Right? Ah! I put in a spring retainer on the output tube because it keeps falling out. Maybe I should see if I could do that for Marsha. Ah! Get her back. All right. Uh, I replaced the reverb shielded cables with some high quality Teflon type. Right? I got to have Teflon around here to have this crap bouncing off of me. Okay? You here we go. All right. So I have a uh, new leather holster on the reverb as well as the cardboard underliner. Right, So, Okay. What else we got? Hey, somebody's coughing on there. All right. Volume. Uh, the master volume has been added to the back as asked by the customer. So don't get on me about that. All right. What else we got here? I added the uh, dual bias test points on the back of the amplifier so you can check the bias on the output tubes. Okay, I uh, cleaned the front panel course and knobs. Marsha didn't help me. She should be, but she doesn't. Right? You didn't ask. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. You didn't volunteer. You All didn't right. ask. Volunteer. All right. Uh, I resought her any questionable connections. Maybe I should see if she has any questionable connections, like up here, right? Okay. All right. And uh, to talk. I tested all the functions. You saw that on the video. All righty. I added clamps for the power cord and reverb cables that were missing. I removed the death cap because that's about idiotic to have these days. Polarity switch is gone because it has the new grounded power cord. And I installed. I didn't. I just covered that. <laughs> you know what happens here is Marsha throws me because she's like throwing cat calls at me. I'm trying to do a good job, Marsha. You told me to. I'm doing it for you. Huh. You're not doing it for me. It's all for her. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. The next one, I'm going to have the guy that owns this amp come in here and play it. Because you guys were like, well, I can't hear it on scope. Yeah, I know. So that will be the next video. We'll see you then. D-Lab, Marsha, cat calling in the background. Bye. See ya.